Hi you guys, this is Ginger Cook and I am so excited to show you a couple of things you're not going to believe. First off, this is our Turner Acrylic Gouache Kit, which remember Daniel gave me as a gift and if you watched our show with him. And what's neat about it is that it's an all-in-one art kit and it comes with its own palette, a little rag, comes with its own little set of brushes, there's a ruler, comes with all these little colors, there's... Um, uh, the, the lid just folds right on top of that, and that's supposed to act as a little palette, okay? So this is what you get in the kit, and it travels really well, which is why we brought it with us. And I'm going to show you how to do a painting with this. Gouache is um, this acrylic gouache. We're going to painting on this tablet that's waterproof. This is a really cool little uh, special drawing tablet, but look where I am. I'm in the Bahamas, and what we're going to be painting is our view out at sea. And we're on the Majesty of the Seas. This was a short three-day cruise that John and I actually won. No kidding. We didn't want to tell anybody at first. And um, I also have a little pencil kit. I got this on Amazon really cheap on some little fast deal for, like I think it was under $10. It comes with all these little pencils. And I actually haven't really used that that much. But um, what we're going to do is I'm looking out the window. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to just, basically I'm going to sketch this in. Now you don't really want to put your horizon line dead set in the middle of any picture. Um, so um, I'm just going to kind of figure out where my horizon line is. Now the challenge with this ruler is it's in metrics. And I, I had to think about that. John was laughing because he doesn't say, he says it doesn't matter half is half is what the numbers are. He's grabbing it and trying to show me what it is. And I'm laughing because what we've got going here is I just wanted to kind of mark something a little bit above half. I could eyeball it in, but you know, rulers are good and I've just sort of told him to get his hands out of the way, that I've got it, right? Just stop, I got it. But he was very concerned. So you can see I'm going up just a little bit above half, and I'm just going to very gently with the pencil. Um, generally speaking, I don't like to use pencils when I'm painting because it's very hard to um, to paint over a pencil line. Um, I'm going to just say I've got a little island up in here. That's what I'm looking at. I'm just standing here looking at the or sitting here and we're actually up in a cafeteria everybody's gone to shore to this private island that the that the cruise line royal caribbean owns and i'm just sitting here just kind of sketching in the sky and the and i don't need a lot of reference but i need something okay so that's what i've got going here and and i'm going to just I'm kind of experimenting because this is sort of a cross and we've got water so it's really an it's a, sort of an acrylic watercolor which is maybe something different, but I, I wanted to see if this would be something sort of fun. Look how little the tubes are, though you get two full tubes of white, okay? So I'm just going to put some paint out, and um, one of the things that we noticed that, you know, I said, is this the right kit? I mean, I, we didn't bring any of our own brushes. We just brought the brushes or any of the cinnamons. We just brought the brushes that were in the kit. That was uh, some sort of cleaner that you can use to clean off um the um, uh, little plastic lid there. Um, so now we're going to start putting colors out. They had some different blues, and you can kind of zoom in if you want to see what the colors are. I think that one was cobalt. They were different blues than what I normally use, so I just sort of um, ignored that. Though they had in the kit like a little color tablet of a little color. It was like a little tab of different colored papers that um, it would show you how to mix those colors using like a little chart that would show you how to mix those using, um, um, you know, the colors that are in the kit. So there were two different blues. There's an ultramarine, I think it was a cobalt. And, um, and you can see that I'm just putting these out. Now what we discovered, because I'm doing this, I went ahead and just because of the noise in the background and the music was playing and there's a lot of people, um, I'm talking to you after the fact. In other words, we're looking at this and I'm looking at this with you, kind of explaining what, I, what I'm doing. There was some sort of green color and then I had this kind of weird red color and it just, it really just didn't matter to me. I mean, we we're going to mix the colors the same way. Someone, sometimes people think they have to have exactly the right color, but you know, you don't. You can just sit there and pause and look at what the labels say. Um, if you want the exact colors that we, you know, put in there. There was a yellow, some sort of yellow, and, and um, it wasn't cad yellow. So these were different colors than what I'm used to. And if you've been watching my videos, what you're used to, I don't think that matters. That's kind of like a kind of a sunflower yellow, that kind of yellow-orange color that was pretty. 
<clears throat> so we got that. And I just, basically, I just uh, went and put out a bunch of colors. I wasn't sure how long they would stay wet. And this was a, sort of like a cad red, kind of. And, um, uh, but we just thought we'd try it. And so how does this work on paper as opposed to canvas? Um, could you take a kit like this and travel with it? Because this went into our suitcase so beautifully. This just tucked away. This whole thing was... Uh, we, we brought a couple of little rags. We brought, the, you know, we have the brushes. You can see we have, came with four brushes. And they're fairly, you know, stiff. They're not as stiff as, say, ruby satin silver, but they have a nice little spring to them. Of course, now they still had sizing on them. You know, brushes come with sizing, you know, from the factory. And so you have to rinse that off. But um, so I got them wet and I'm just getting, I'm just mixing a little blue. And I'm not wetting the paper. All right. So you can see I'm not wetting the paper. I've just got a little bit of blue. And um, I think that was the cobalt, a tiny bit of, you know, I think there was a black too. I put a little black. They had some black. I put it in there to tone down the that blue so it wasn't too bright. Tried to match the sky. It was really fun to sit there and match the sky. So a little tiny bit of water on the tip of the brush, kind of moisten that a little. And I'm just coming across the paper like this. And, you know, I wasn't sure if it would buckle, but you can see how nicely... That worked a little bit more water and notice how I'm always overlapping the wet edges do you see that and that's really important now you wouldn't want to get used too much water on this because I think you could buckle the paper so now I'm going into white paint keep adding white and then kind of kind of layer some of that in a little bit going a little bit sideways and then I'm going into white and suggesting clouds just the top of some clouds there's some beautiful clouds out there and again I wasn't sure how the white in this kit would um, would work later when this was dry, but right now we're just, I'm just suggesting sort of a cloud bank as I paint this. So the, the reason I thought this was good was that sometimes if you're an artist and you move into a hotel with your a range of stuff and you start sitting down and maybe the garden somewhere, you're somewhere in a lobby or you're, you know, and there's carpet everywhere and people looking at your stuff a little alarmed, right? So the, I thought this looked very, um, friendly. This looked environmentally friendly if you were going somewhere and if it would I wanted to see if it would work like our regular acrylics and I'm happy to report that it really did. Um, I'm tapping in a little bit of white here to catch the highlight of the clouds. Now I can look out the window where I am and I can see that the clouds are kind of being lit from the from the left and so I'm kind of creating it that way. And um, just tapping that on there, just the paint. I didn't have a hair dryer, but the painting is the paint is absorbing fairly fast. Now I'm going to make a little gray color, and you'll notice that you know anytime you want it, you add a little bit of red to blue, you can make a gray, kind of like a fog bank on the bottom, kind of where the um, where the horizon line is meeting the ocean. And that's a line that has to be fairly straight. And this is why I had the ruler too. You want to, your horizon line. Uh, if you tip it, it looks, you know, the water's all going to run out of the ocean. You have to really watch that when you're painting oceans. So again, I'm just sort of getting the excess water off the brush, making sure it's kind of clean. And again, I'm going back into the clouds and, you know, adding a few more layers in these clouds. And as I paint this, I'll keep doing that. Now, the water was, um, I'm adding some ultramarine blue to the water because the water was a different color than the sky. And it was really fun. I could see that right when I was looking out the window. I could see that. And um, so you can see that um, I just started adding some ultramarine blue into the sky color that I already had going. And and there you go. That was probably a little more stronger ultramarine blue and less, um, and less of the sky color. But uh, we didn't leave it that way. We went back and I was happy to report that this layers. Now, if you if the paint's really thick, you can see that the paper absorbs it. If it's um, you can do washes in the sense that uh, like just like a watercolor, you can add a little bit of water to the. Uh, this is paper now, not canvas. So with paper, you can add a little bit of water to it, and it will stain and be a little bit lighter. But as I got closer to the island, this is the reason I went into the greens. Um, it was very green. The water was very blue-green around the island, which was interesting to me, too. So again, a painting on location, what you're doing when you're going out and you're painting on location like this, even though we're in the comfort of a, you know, a room looking out over the water as opposed to out on the deck, which would have been very hot, um, 
and that my pain is uh, <clears throat> staying, you know, hasn't dried out on me. It, it never really did. I, I have to say that the paint, um, actually, I, I did two full paintings uh, with this palette that I put out there. You know, it, it stayed nicely. And what I would have brought with me, I didn't have, but here's what I would have brought with me having done this. I would have brought with me a water mister, and I still think I would have misted my paints a little bit. I just would have liked to have had the option of the water mister, and I didn't have one. And you see as I'm getting closer to the uh, where my little island is. It was very flat, this little island. There wasn't much to it. I, I think island's too nice a word for it. It's more like a sandbar with some trees is what it looked like to me. Um, this is, we were on this side of the ship. There was stuff on the other side too, but we were on this side because um, the light was the best. The way the light was coming from it wasn't too glaring. We had to think about that. So, um, and also there was um, some water behind our island. And generally speaking, in, in most ocean scenes, now this is interesting when you're painting water, in most o ocean scenes, the water toward the horizon is more of an ultramarine blue color. It's slightly darker, okay? So, and then it kind of blends back out. So, there, there you go. There's our horizon line. And the horizon line is always, just to clarify that, the horizon line is where the sky meets the water. If there are no mountains, or in case of an ocean, it's where the water, the you know, the land, if the, it's where the sky meets it. So you can see that we're, John's kind of moving the camera around now, trying to see what all we're doing. Um, I'm come back, coming back here and uh, going back to a little more white paint. Now that's had a chance to set up, so I'm adding a few more little light touches to my clouds. And uh, I'm having this is the first time I've ever tried to use uh, uh, gouache. Um, never tried to use it at all. Um, and it, the colors are very bright and clear and very pretty. I'll say you that. And this is a nice sketch. Um, that's what I would tell you. This is a beautiful sketch, um, paint, like a painting sketch. And if you're traveling, I think this is um, a really good kit to take uh, because it doesn't take up a lot of room. You can paint with it. Um, I would probably still bring, now here's what I would bring extra now that we've looked at it. I would bring the uh, the Mr. Bottle, and then I would bring, uh, for sure, a couple of my ruby satin silver brushes that I really like. I like these, and they were fine, but I still would have brought my other brushes. Because, you know, I like to, it's like a comfortable pair of shoes. You like, I like painting what I'm used to, <clears throat> but you don't need a real, this is really very easy to paint. It's very soft paint. That's what I would tell you. It's very soft, and you see we're adding little short, long strokes. And notice that the Strokes on the water are all going back and forth. You know, water's generally level. So, and it was a very calm day. There was really no surf or anything. Very, very calm day. Now we're looking for other brushes, see what we've got. Oh, they all came with a little protected plastic lid thing here. So try that one. Um, I have done watercolor in the past. I don't have not taught on YouTube. So this is really acrylic painting on paper. And we will do, in the future, we will try some with our small little canvases that we do, a little 6x8 uh, uh, canvases. We'll do some of the gouache on those, too, in the future. But I think what, what we wanted to find out here was that could we go on a cruise ship and paint on a cruise ship and, you know, not be so intrusive to with all our stuff that, you know, we kind of got kicked out of the room kind of thing. And also, could you guys come? Could you come on a cruise with me? I mean, not talking about, you know, could you come on a cruise and just hang out with me and watch me paint or maybe bring your own stuff and paint? Could you do this? Could you travel somewhere? And could you do this? And what would it entail? And because, you know, anymore, if you're traveling, you know, anywhere where you've got, um, you know, they weigh luggage anymore, so you don't want to be load, loaded down with pounds of extra stuff. What would be the way to do it? And could we film a lesson like this on a cruise ship? And we, again, come back when we got back in the studio uh, which is where I am now, home, and could we then explain explain how we're painting it? And what I noticed on YouTube is about 80% of the videos that I see on YouTube, on the art videos, they, the artist shoots the video and then talks over them. And I, I rarely, I haven't done that. It's not a bad thing to do. Um, and in some ways it's probably better in the sense that I can be, you know, I can be 
Sometimes it's very, you don't understand how hard it is to talk and explain things. I'm showing you right now how it's not bleeding through and focus on what you're painting at the same time. So this gave me a 100% concentration on my picture. Now what I've added there is a little bit of the beach, which is a little bit of the beach color. And I'm taking some of that funny weird yellow color, that kind of sunflower yellow and a little bit of that green. And I'm um, mixing, um, uh, I'm going to just tap on some of this foliage that I saw. It was very, again, it was very flat. And um, just this is what was growing on that little island. Let's tap that on there like this. And uh, that was a little, that brush was def definitely kind of a squared off brush. And this is fine. I mean, this worked just fine. And it, you'll notice it's an up and down tapping motion. And please notice how often I load the brush with paint. You'll see what it went one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, get paint. You see that? Sometimes I think one of the reasons people have trouble is they don't load their brush enough with paint. Um, you know, if you if you find yourself doing a couple strokes and nothing happens, now I'm changing colors, maybe a little bit darker, I'm tapping, just again tapping that on there, uh, and and your brush strokes really kind of define what you're painting. And I'm leaving a little bit of the white of the paper showing through a couple places. Because the white doesn't go back that easily. And the other, that brings me back to this. What I would add, even though this kit had two whites in it, all right, and you didn't, uh, probably didn't need anywhere near as much paint as I put out. I mean, I honestly, I did two paintings with this, with a little bit of paint I put out. So the paint goes a long way. But um, I think I was still bought some titanium white from my regular acrylics. But I, I would have brought a tube of that and maybe a tube of my mixing white or zinc white, um, probably a small tube of probably not zinc because the only people that I've seen make it are golden and their tubes too big. I think I would have just gotten Liquitex's mixing white, a small tube of that, and I would have brought a small tube of acrylic titanium white uh, from our uh, you know regular acrylics and, and so I would have added that. And then the other thing I would have brought and I will brought, bring the next time is. I have these little clips I used to hold down my palette. Um, they're like little tiny um, miniature clothespins that people use for sewing. They're real teeny, about the size of your little fingernail. And I think I might um, have, you know, put those on the edge so that the paper didn't want to kind of lift up from the palette, but it, I mean from the tablet. But I didn't want to, I, it actually, it dried really flat. So impressed with how it dried. Um, really so impressed with how the whole thing dried and how the whole thing looked. Okay, so now I'm going ahead and I'm putting some um, little bit of rocks. I've got one of some brown. I'm putting a few little rocks out in the ocean. They were there, and I'm kind of looking out the window, and I see that there's these little tiny rocks. Notice that the bottom of the rocks, it's flat because the water's coming right up to them, right? See that? Water's coming right up to those. So, I mean, all right, so then... You've got to remember to rinse your brush between uh, between colors. And here's the thing. Make sure you've really wiped it off. Well, I had a rag in my lap. So now I'm going to go back. And this clouds have dried a bit again. So I'm going to go back and try another layer of white. See if I can't touch those up a bit more. With the, um, just a couple places. Brighten those clouds up a little bit more. This is my third coat of white on there. But now this is much drier. Okay. Right, so there you go. Just a few, t just a few splashes of white. We had some people come up at the time and talk to us about what we were doing, and uh, I think this was really fun. I think that uh, uh, John and I would like to be able to do a lot of traveling and be able to um, paint what we see on the road, kind of speak. You know, just be able to go out and paint, paint as we're traveling. And film that and this is uh, we, we tried uh, two different cameras to do this with this to, to do with this uh, to, to film this and this is our um, first camera that we tried it, you know it's a nice big heavy it's a, a lot of camera equipment stuff we got a tripod there's a lot of equipment that we took but uh, after doing this uh, twice we came up with a pretty good package as far as how we're going to do it the next time um, you notice that I'm still adding a few little details here and there. 
And that's what you want to be able to do is just you kind of remember acrylics is all about layers. So you got to be a little patient. Um, I'm adding another little bit of land that was back over here in the corner that just kind of came out from the edge. Another little bit, another little part of the Bahamas there. There's a lot of little atolls full of uh, little tiny bits of land coming out of the water. Now I need a nice dark green, so we're adding a little bit of uh, probably black and brown to that, darken that up. And I'll probably add a little bit of the dark green into my island now for some contrast. I was afraid to do the dark first. You know how we normally in acrylics do the dark first? And I was a little hesitant to do that, and here's why. Because I wasn't sure if the paint would be able to cover um, if you could put a lighter color over a darker color in, in gouache, it turns out you can, but I wasn't sure it would, how it would act. Because, you know, in watercolor, um, you have to, you kind of, you can't do that. And so you have to sort of save out your, your lights. So now we're just coming in here with a little small brush with some very, very light blue. And we're adding a few little bits of light around our, um, uh, almost almost pure white but it's kind of blending into the paper there a little bit because the paper this is still wet this is not dry yet this is all still very wet which is a good thing and again I don't know how canvas would react but we'll do another video on canvas and we'll check it out oh, and somebody said you know how much is that kit well I don't know I think Daniel said that the, the one we he gave that to me as a gift John bought another one to, to, for him so that he could, you know, do some lessons with me too while we're traveling. We actually have two of these kits, and I think we paid retail for the other one. And I think that they range anywhere between. Well, I don't even want to say that they're not they're they because it depends when you buy them, and who you're buying them from. But I think for what you get in them, you know, the ruler, the color mixing chart, the all the paints, and you know, you just have to buy the little tablet. Or bring it like a little uh, Paramount tablet with canvases, and I think in our case I would bring uh, already. I do it. I bring some little canvases that already had a background painted on them with regular acrylics, just to just to save a step. Uh, generally speaking, if you're pre-prepping a canvas um, to bring, you know, not paper, but like a canvas, you'd probably paint um, paint it either dark. I'd have some dark brown ones and some kind of light yellow ones and maybe a light blue one or something like that. Just something with some paint on it. Maybe light beige would be good too. Just sort of kind of in neutral, but still had some paint on it to grab. Okay, so you can see where I'm looking at the island and I'm just adding a few little bits more um, green in that one little center, bringing that down. Because I just want the light color is the beach. And I'm bringing some light green down here like that. There you go, so we've got that little bit right there. Now the one thing we did find when we were all through with this, uh, we did two, um, two separate lessons with the, using all these colors I put out, and then John went down to the restroom to wash the palette off, the little plastic palette off and it didn't wash off at all well. Now that little tube of something might have gotten rid of it if he didn't bring that with him. So I would, the other thing I would bring is a, plastic, is a paper disposable palette. I wouldn't use that little palette that came with it because it didn't come out very well um, as far as, uh, it was very hard to clean. But something kind of cool that we discovered while we were doing this was that, um, you know how I love my little tub of towels to clean them? I'd bring, I'd bring in a Ziploc bag, I'd bring some of those tub of towels uh, to uh, clean my hands, and that probably would have cleaned the palette too. But what I discovered is that a Purell, you know, that's that hand sanitizer. Uh, they have that all over the ship. I'm surprised they haven't dipped people in it, because every time you turn around, they, they're so worried about people, you know, sp uh, spreading germs that they, every, every, every room you go into on a ship, they've got one of those there, and they want you to put it on your hands, and they, they hand it to you and squirt it on your hands before you go in the dining room. They're very concerned about um, about germs. Well, I discovered I had, we, John and I had a little portable Purell bottle um, on our backpack, and the Purell uh, took all the paint off my hands in seconds. It was amazing. I'm like, well, who would have thought that was a, 
uh, a hand cleaner, but it really worked as that too. So that was a just a side note, things that you learn from us. And if you if you like this kind of thing, I'm just going to encourage you to, um, you know, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I would love it if you would do that. If you like the idea of the, you know, that here we are painting on location, I think it's kind of cool. You'll see I'm going back in here and adding some um, darker tones to the clouds. Because remember, I'm sitting outside looking at the clouds. I'm seeing I'm looking right out the window at them. So I can see it. So as my painting dries, I can see where I need the contrast, the shadows and the clouds, adding a little more depth to this painting. <clears throat> but we have a beautiful Wave and Water Masterclass if you like painting water on our website. Um, www.gingercooklive.gallery. We have a separate class. It's just every month we add another painting to it. And some, some of them are, are quite elaborate and some of them are, are beginners. So we don't expect you to be a master of water to take the class, but we're going to help you master water with the idea that waterfalls and lakes and oceans and waves and stuff, they all take a certain set of skills. And the more you do it, the different ways to do it, you'll come up with your best way to do it. That's the idea behind this. You'll notice again, I'm putting some contrasting tones in the water, just a little bit of grays and purples. I've actually gone into a little bit of purple and added that to the water. I noticed it was it had some purple jewel tones in it. Now that's the advantage of painting on location. As uh, you know, the camera, when you take a photograph of something, in the process of printing it or looking at it, it's going to look one way, but um, as the light changes in the day and you're painting something, you're going to notice, and you're painting on location, you're going to notice that um, the colors around you take a whole different look than on a photograph. So anyway, there's our, um, that, I think that came out pretty well. I think that's our picture, and I hope you and, and you liked it, and you see that uh, um, it was pretty easy to do. I may come back and just do, now you know with me whenever I think I'm done, I may come back and do a few final touches. Uh, I was I, I had that little tiny pointed brush and I was going to sign my name with that. It didn't work at all. So but again, our Posco pens I think is what I finally ended up signing my name with because I tried a couple times with a little pointed brush to sign my name. Was not impressed at all with it. But um, you know it wiped off, which is fine. What you know which is. You, you know, and on paper, by the way, I probably could have taken a pencil and signed my name, but, you know, pencil has a tendency to smear. Now, the question's going to come up, would you varnish this piece because it's on paper, um, or would you frame it behind glass? Uh, I would probably frame this behind glass and not varnish it. Um, that's what I'm thinking, because it's, it's on paper. I don't believe I would varnish it, or if I did varnish it, I might use a spray, just a fast spray varnish on it. I don't think I'd brush on a varnish. I'm, I just don't think so. We'll experiment with the varnishes. One day we'll do a whole video on how to varnish paper, but um, I think for me, if I was going to varnish it at all, I would uh, spray it behind, uh, you know, just spray it, and I think I still would put it behind glass, because paper generally is a good place to... Um, you know, just to protect it because it's paper as opposed to canvas, which is not. Of course, it does have a layer of acrylic on it. This is not watercolor. This is acrylic, but it really behaves a lot like watercolor on paper. The difference is that once it's dry, you know, watercolor, you can always lift it, but once acrylic's dry, it's there. It's just not coming back up. It's just like your regular acrylic paints. And so, but I, we did feel like the colors seemed to be a bit brighter. The pigments are a bit more lush. So, but it's not going to be so much different than your regular acrylic paint. And honestly, for the convenience of this, it's great. And again, I think if I had just had a little titanium white, I would have been, um, their white's okay. But I think that the acrylic, you know, regular Liquitex titanium heavy body white might have been better. And uh, you have to really watch with these brushes that you, when you're rinsing them, that you don't end up with a drop of water on your paper. You got to make sure you're wiping those brushes off before you uh, get into it. So there's our, that's our picture. And again, please subscribe to our channel. We love your comments. I try to respond to all of them. We've got some pretty, we've got actually a water section on our playlist of videos 
you can see where I just took a little Posca pen there and I did it in sort of purple a little Posca pen it was like a pink purple color and I'll put my little red stripe through my name my little slash that's my signature and there you have it uh, the, the you know the Bahamas you know a little island in the Bahamas from the uh, from the deck of the Victory of the Sea. This was a three-day cruise out of Florida that uh, that uh, John and I won uh, over the Columbus Day weekend, and we wanted to just go out and sneak out there, and, you know, we drove 17 hours to get there from Houston in the car, and we got right on the ship. And um, it was, a, it was a, fun, a fun weekend, and we bring this island to you. Hope you guys like it. And you're going, well, now what? Well, I didn't, my signature didn't show up very well, so I'm not going over it with a yellow pen because it didn't show up very well, so I'm going kind of going over my signature again. We didn't bring the white pen, which we should have. The Posca white pen is the one we should have brought, which we didn't. Well, note to self, bring Posca white pen for signing the fine point. P-O-S-C-A, that's great. Bring that. And I think, I pretty much think I'm done here. But you know me, I'll sign it and I'll go back and look and then do something. But I'm now I'm kind of looking at this out the window. So how fun is that? And I think you could have a great book of memories of your trips.